All right, so on that note, let's get started with our next session. If everybody is ready, please take your seats. Everyone may please very quickly take your seats. We are also marching ahead with our next set of sessions. So let's do that with all the attention to our next set of speakers as well. All right, so uh, first up, we're going to be having Mira Ayer, who is the head of marketing with BigBasket.com. And she's going to be sharing her presentation as well. A warm welcome to you, Mira. Also joining Mira, we also have with us uh, the Chief Digital Officer with Madison Digital, Mr. Vishal Chunchankar. And, that's right, let's have a round of applause. And the founder and CEO of Hive Minds, Jyotir Mai. So if I may please invite all of them on stage. Now the format of this particular session is three individual presentations. So we're going to have individual set of speakers sharing their insights. And first up, I'm going to be requesting Mira Ayer, who's the head of marketing with BigBasket.com. Okay, we'll have... So uh, let me just uh, introduce uh, Mira. So uh, I, I guess uh, more or less a lot of people in this room would know her. Uh, Mira is the head of uh, marketing for Big Basket, uh, uh, driving the one of the it's the largest online grocery. It's the largest grocery company in, in India uh, in terms of uh, uh, overall size and growth. Um, Mira comes with uh, about 13 years of uh, experience uh, prior uh, to this working uh, with Unilever. So uh, Mira is going to share insights in terms of how digital can aid in making the online spends work better, the offline spends uh, work better. Vishal here uh, is the chief digital officer uh, uh, at Madison uh, with about two decades of uh, experience from uh, marketing. Uh, Vishal is also going to share a lot more insights in terms of how to uh, do the, the media planning for FMCG brands, particularly on digital, uh, to make the hardworking money work harder. Uh, so myself uh, here, I'm uh, CEO of High Minds, so, uh, a pure play digital agency. Um, so I'm going to share our learnings in terms of how we could get significantly better understanding of the consumer journey and hence make better use of the digital spends uh, than tr driving uh, purely in terms of either performance or in terms of awareness. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Audible at the back? No? Yes? Yeah. Okay, great. I always start any presentation of mine in any gathering by first asking for a show of hands of how many households over here um, are big basket households? How many big basketeers here? Okay, thank you, great. Uh, always steps me up, thank you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the best return on marketing investments uh, from digital spends and I got picked I guess because I come from FMCG. I've moved on to e-commerce and uh, I almost thought that I should make this presentation in a way that if I were to get back into FMCG, what would I do differently, right? So I'm going to bring it live for you with a lot of examples. So uh, just bear with me for the next 10 minutes. So if I were to look at the traditional product marketing funnel, right, the innovation funnel as we call it, you would have the innovation funnel, which will lead to market mix, uh, marketing mix getting made and deployed, followed by sales and shopper marketing, and then a post-launch evaluation. Where does digital come uh, in this entire funnel, so to speak? It can definitely work on product innovation funnel. How? Through research and through crowdsourcing of ideas. And a lot of companies are already doing it. And I'll share an example with you. It will definitely come into play in your marketing mix deployment because today digital is obviously 17 and a half percentage of the overall addicts, as we just saw. It will come into sales and shopper marketing with e-commerce becoming bigger and bigger. I, to just give you a sense of it, if you look at FMCG as a whole, possibly e-commerce, um, all India is less than a percentage share in terms of overall business. But come to Bangalore, and I have from very good sources, e-commerce accounts to at least 10%, if not more, of overall FMCG sales. That's how big it is in the scheme of cities where e-commerce is large. So selling online and research, post lunch valuation definitely, you can't get a better medium than digital. And I'll get you some examples on that as well. And all my examples are based on big basket, so I want to give you a sense of the base and convince you that the base is large enough to draw meaningful conclusions for most brands which are either mid or 
above mid price in the segment. Obviously, it will not work for a wheel or a ghadi, but it will definitely work for any brand that is mid and above. So as of Jan 2018, Big Basket alone had about 13 million visits from about four and a half million visitors and delivered about a million and a half orders uh, placed by about 600,000 members. Average session time that we see is about 10 minutes. We see about two and a half orders per member per month. We also see the uh, average number of items in the basket being 18, which is very different for grocery as a vertical as compared to rest of e-commerce. And we see a monthly basket value of about 2,500. So bear in mind that when I talk about examples and experiments that we've run using digital as a media, the base is large and therefore conclusive and you can actually take it to be representative of the market. Right? So the first example, and I'll get into it quickly, innovation. We wanted to launch a recipe section on Big Basket and we wondered how would we name it or what should we call it. We had options of BB recipes, straightforward, BB flavors, BB cookbook. All we did was use social media. We put out one post and we put out static display creatives with these three different options. All we measured was the vote share and clicks and likes. It costed us 5,000, it took us two days and we zeroed in on the name which is BB cookbook. It's a very versatile medium. Right? You can state the problem and define the solution very easily when you're using digital as a medium. It is targeted and result focused. And that's how you should really approach digital as a medium to really improve your Romy's. Second exam example that I'm going to take, and this is something that all of you uh, will find very relevant in your spheres. What will work better on a press ad? Every time I release a press ad, I spend more than a crore. Right? So the first question is, for example, should we show a category level discount saying biscuits 10% off or biscuits 15% off or should I show a product level discount which is saying Pampers 200 rupees off, right? Which one would work better? And the second question is I have 500 KVIs. Which ones should feature in my press ad and which ones should it, right? Simple solution to a one crore plus investment that's anyways going to happen. At Networks, we released two creatives, one with category level discount saying diapers 25% off and one with product level discount saying Pampers large 58 rupees 200 off. The product one got at least 60 basis points higher click and that's a big margin when it comes to digital. Therefore, Press Ad carried that and Press Ad did not carry a category level discount. It cost me all of 50,000 bucks. Social media carousals, you know the carousal ads? with all different KVI products within a category. The ones that got the largest clicks got featured in the ads. The ones that didn't got dropped from the ad. A one lakh experiment on digital that influenced my one crore plus investment on press and gave me far higher returns in terms of visits to the uh, website, installs on the app, and gave me much better growth than what would have been the case had I just gone with gut. A third example is on pricing and offers, and this is something we do on an everyday basis across multiple categories, right? A-B testing of should I put the offer as buy one, get one free, or should I tell customers to buy two and get 50% off? The same offer, but different ways to say it. Basket level offers, uh, buy for 1,500 rupees on Big Basket and get one kilo sugar free, or buy for 1,500 on Big Basket and get a 15% cashback or buy for 1500 on Big Basket and get a flat 10% discount. Which one will work better, right? Basket value one versus basket value two. Should I set, set the threshold at 1500 or should it be 1200 or should it be 2000? Should it be price one or price two for my private label? Should my ATA be priced at uh, 42 rupees a kilo or 48 rupees a kilo? Should I write the discount as a percentage of or as a price of? Quick testing in both these cases, both example one, two and three, you can do such quick testing at the fraction of the cost. And then you can actually take it offline to improve overall returns on your investments. What design works? What call out work? How much time before it loses fizz and people are fed up of it and stop clicking it? And what is the conversion finally going to be? Which means that you can actually narrow down saying that if I invest so much, ultimately it's going to trickle down into so many people buying it. Um, last two examples, post-launch evaluation, right? Uh, very critical for us, 
and this is something that we do so well uh, using digital medium. Simple method like through an email to authentic buyers of your product, right, in a particular month. And you typically get very high response rates, um, especially if, it, if you're on a very engaged platform like a big basket. Two days, and you have all the analysis that you need to really understand how well is your product packaging and the overall experience working with your customers. Rich data that can be analyzed by all kinds of cuts that you want. Super cost effective and super time effective. And the last one that I have over here is really on shopper behavior. Uh, how many have spent tons of time really tracking you know, and doing shopper studies, tracking this you know, eyeball movement, where it goes, what it does, etc. I have two cases over here, right? One is on 29 Jan this, this year, we sent out a push notification on Mami Poco pants. It was something that the company basically agreed to do with us, right? So this is the journey of a customer who clicked that push notification and came onto our app. So at around 2 p.m., he comes onto the app. Uh, you can't read this, but I'll tell you. He clicked the PN and came onto the app. He added two of those XXL diapers onto his cart. He closed the app, right? After 15 minutes, comes back. And what does he do? He basically reopens the app and navigates, browses, right? Not searching, but browses to the level two category, which is uh, baby toiletries. And he adds a Johnson & Johnson top to toe, right? Cart value is now increased to 903. It was earlier 828. At about 237, the same person goes to face and hand wash, which is under personal care, moves out of baby as a category. Right, and over here he adds a Lifebuoy hand wash and a sanitizer. He has actually scrolled seven pages to add both these products. Cart value is now 1101. And at about 244, he checks out. He uses online payment and he exits. Um, in Big Basket, you would know, Big Basket is here that the threshold for free delivery is 1000. So he built his cart up over this one hour to ensure that it crosses 1000 and actually moves there. But imagine the power of knowing this and knowing all the touch points that you can influence the same customer. Imagine this customer being shown a, uh, an ad of some other category which is allied, right? Uh, and therefore being prompted to purchase something more, uh, more exciting, more engaging. This is the second example that I have of a woman user on our website. We saw the app, right? And by the way, the person buying the uh, diapers was a man. Right, it's a guy doing the purchase over here. Whereas this is a woman, she's a direct visitor, which means she's come directly onto our site. At 9.48 in the morning, she comes onto the site and she searches for women's horlicks. Oh no, sorry, not women, mother's horlicks. The search results come up and she's added two cartons of that vanilla flavor onto her cart and her cart is now 912 bucks, right? At 9.53, she is browsing through the whole gourmet chocolates and biscuits. She's scrolled to the fifth page over here. At 9.59, she's chosen the Belgian chocolate seahorses. She's clicked on that product to read up the description on that product. She seems to be satisfied and therefore has added it onto her cart and now her cart value is 1307. At 10.01, she's checked out. She's applied a voucher code and ha has used Paytm to really get out. Now imagine when you when she was looking at the whole uh, Mother's Holics bit, if you had also shown her a uh, Safery or a Whisper banner over there, right? Would it have prompted her to click that? Possibly. And you can actually test that if you do, right? So in Big Basket, our motto is that in God we trust, but for everything else, we look at data, right? That's been our motto and that's what is digital all about. And I just want to leave you guys with a, a case study that we've done with HUL, right? We took two variations of marketing campaigns with them on two of their largest categories, home care and personal care. Right? Two similar time periods, two similar kinds of spends and therefore very comparable. Um, look at the first two columns alone and that is for home care. At a period where there was nil marketing that was happening and only whatever they were doing on the outside media, they actually degrew about 3% but add to the mix that they were already employing on TV and other sources, some digital marketing and communication to our base through a push notification the same number looked at 26% growth. Look to personal care in the last two columns. Personal care had just one banner on the site, banner to all, and they were growing at 
we added again digital marketing and communication to our base and digital marketing meaning we employing the marketing to our base of big basketeers the growth was a phenomenal 45% right 45% on hindustan leaders personal care portfolio is a big number right and that's the kind of difference that you're able to make so a single channel approach is any day far outweighed by a multiple channel approach that you have try to hit the customer with similar or same message also multiple times and you will see much better returns coming for it so in conclusion there are ways to make any medium work harder in terms of rois and especially digital but where i think digital really scores today is one it is very versatile and malleable you can really do so much with it it's targeted it's very very measurable and it's way more engaging as a lot of studies have pointed out and companies should really consider using digital marketing as a laboratory right it is a laboratory for marketers to figure out what works better and then take it on to offline media where your spends are anyways in the range of 10x today big baskets media mix is really 65% atl comprising primarily of tv and press and 35% digital and a lot of what we do on digital is to really guide what will work on the 65% of the spend which is obviously a much bigger budget it will help in improve your offline rois and it will also sharpen your overall marketing mix so that's it from me and i'll hand it over to vishal So, uh, so we're going to take this uh, whole uh, aspect of digital is uh, versatile, uh, digital is malleable, uh, digital is definitely more dynamic and powerful in terms of giving insights to the very next level for our FMCG brands. How exactly they could uh, possibly utilize this to, at a uh, next level to engage with the customer. So we all know that the customer journey, uh, right, um, in terms of is changing at a drastic pace there is um, the the whole dreamy project of google glass but now with music uh, and alexa it's coming true and there is Alec, uh, uh, google, google alexa and also in terms of uh, amazon go the payment whole system of payments even in the offline industry is changing so the whole way of how a consumer is interacting with the brand or even with the process of purchase has massively changed and we we still look at the older way of the con consumer journey which is very straight and simple moving from awareness to purchase to loyalty expansion however today the number of digital touch points all touch points have just exploded to make this a significantly more complex system so what what does this mean is it's it's a lot more omni channel and it's also consumer driven so about two third of, our, of the consumers get influenced by consumer driven uh, influences at the point of um, purchase because there are so many reviews out there uh, there are recommended products which is also to an extent driven by the consumer sales and in this kind of a situation uh, how exactly we understand this customer journey has to drastically change right and it's no longer linear it's fragmented a consumer goes in cycles towards you know there is a predisposition set and they might actually go back in their decision to reconsider their purchase or uh, to reconsider the consideration set and and once they buy they would share and that would influence a lot more customers so this entire uh, system is no longer uh, uh, linear and uh, it has become more complex so how do we how do brands tackle this aspect of dealing with an omnichannel consumer journey even though the consumer is omnichannel the consumer does not cease to expect a lot of continuity they would be on the app like let's say on a big basket i would be very annoyed if 
I added a product on the cart and then I go to the website and if it is not there in the cart. So these are very simple things which most of the websites are keeping continuity on. But not just that, but I also get an ad when I move away from desktop to a mobile with the kind of things that I was considering to buy. So consumers are expecting consistency whether they walk into the store or they are browsing online. So in this kind of a thing, we have to tie all the data, which is not very easy in today's scenario. Even Google hasn't solved the in-store visits attribution problem. So some amount of proactive uh, personalization is something that FMCG brands will have to uh, do actively. The second aspect is the whole journey is fragmented. So we have to somewhere figure out the whole critical touch points which guide the customer towards purchase. Creating awareness is good but not sufficient because there are so many other distractions in the consumer journey today. So somewhere at pretty much every single touch point, you will have to influence the customer actively with some kind of a journey innovation, be it a push notification, or even, even in terms of the cart value of being 1,000, is a journey innovation to drive the customer towards purchase. How do you influence the other aspect of consumer getting influenced by third party uh, uh, you know, communication and not the brand communication? For a long time, the consumer journey was influenced by the brand communication, but today it is highly influenced by social media reviews and other things. So somewhere the brands have to get innovative in, in getting a plug in that system. Chatbots and many other uh, innovations today are somewhere getting the consumer to interact with the brand the way they interact with their friends or other uh, uh, social websites and things. So these three aspects are very essential for us to drive a consumer journey in a better way. The way I would look at it, the, a brand's ability to shape a customer journey in an innovative way will soon be a very decisive factor in terms of getting competitive advantage and also growth. So in this whole scope, what we try to do at Hive Minds is to kind of quantify this. So how do we measure this whole um, uh, earlier to uh, what we built in terms of uh, signals as in total, uh, Madison has already revised the in terms of the consumer journey to be more customer centric uh, and changing it to encounter, explore and buy. Uh, right? in, in, in these aspects, we are looking at a lot of signals which are available on the digital media to quantify how a brand is influencing the customer at this stage. So this gives us uh, in terms of a single metric or an M-Fusion score is what we have. We are introducing this as in the system saying that an M-Fusion score is going to tell a brand manager what is the brand's influence in the entire journey of the customer at various touch points and where exactly do you, will you have to inf start influencing it better. Right? Now, uh, purely in terms of how exactly this works is we are processing all of the signals into decision intelligence uh, bringing us to uh, something where uh, you know we should be able to ask brand managers influence the customer uh, at touch points also understand what are the strong levers the other competitors are using in this uh, flow we should be able to find hooks to improve how the brand is seen felt experienced and um, evaluated in the process uh, we should also be able to reach the customers in the most influencing moment based ads driving them towards purchases. Now, which, so I'll, I'll just take you through step by step as to which part of the journey do you influence? How do you go about it? So we, we just looked at the deodorant market today and uh, used all the signals that we have access to in the system and looked at um, how is a Nivea or a Fog or an Engage performing in, 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 uh, in, with respect to the digital. Now, Fog has reasonably low presence on the digital front, even though they are significantly high penetration in terms of the encounter phase on the offline media. And when we look at the explore phase, it's typically all the social media and also uh, any amount of um, shares which you come across, which is influencing the explore phase of it. And purchase is mostly a proxy towards, let's say, the number of sales which are happening on a marketplace like Big Basket or Amazon. So having some amount of understanding of how, our, how is purchase getting influenced on all of these marketplaces is very important. In a store, you would walk up, you have a consideration set, you're going to make a decision in the next two minutes, you're going to pick it up. 
online, there is a lot of distraction. So how exactly the purchase funnel completes after your consideration phase is also very important. So taking all of these factors, uh, when we look at the scores, the way to look at this is in the funnel. As long as you are doing very well throughout the funnel, the base is, uh, you know, the entire uh, cycle is completing quite well for the consumer. However, if you have invested massively on the encounter phase, but haven't done a good job in terms of the journey innovation at the explore or a purchase phase, you are going to lose out in terms of sales. So driving, you know, uh, earlier, um, uh, Dishu Kumar was talking about uh, chief growth officer, uh, kind of a perspective where there is an accountability of how exactly is the growth, not just on the media uh, effectiveness. So driving all the way thrill, explore and purchase funnel becomes extremely important in this uh, context. Now, even if we know where exactly do we influence, what do we influence is also very important. So already uh, most of the brands use uh, social listening tools and sentiment analysis to understand how is the brand being perceived. However, categorizing this is extremely important. Like, if it is deodorant, I need to know how exactly is my brand performing on something like fra fragrance and longevity, which are the two key factors that consumers are looking for today in the market. When we compared uh, these aspects for uh, some of the top brands in the industry today, uh, there is a significantly uh, high number of uh, reviews for fragrance on the fog um, and skin, Titan skin. Uh, however, in terms of uh, Nivea, it's, it's mildly lower compared to most of the other brands. However, in terms of the longevity, Fox seems to have a lot of complaints. I mean, look at the bottom graph. It is the percentage of negative reviews that Fog has for longevity uh, or even a Titan skin, wherein uh, a Nivea is doing fantastic on the longevity aspect. So this could be a product positioning that the brand has uh, cautiously made. Uh, however, this feedback can go a long way in terms of the brand managers to quickly go back and fix a lot of things, especially when packaging is an issue or if they really want to position it as a long-lasting you know, long uh, deodorant. Uh, however, if the consumers are not perceiving that way, then the marketing communication has to change or the product communication has, product has to change. So how do we go about influencing these aspects? We already know about the targeted ads and seamless integrations and everything. Uh, with the re reasonably, the journey innovations that I spoke about has to come from the brand teams. The way Big Basket has done something like a smart basket is a journey innovation to quickly get the consumer to close the purchase cycle. And Amazon Go is a journey innovation. So brands have to really start innovating on the consumer journey to start influencing in terms of the overall um, you know, brand growth. Uh, with that, I'll hand over to Vishal. Uh, for uh, talking about how to make uh, hard wo working money work harder. Well, you did all the job for making the money work harder. Hello. First of all, thank you very much. And I've got the most challenging job in hand because the clock says time is up. And these two ladies have spoken about how the hard working money is going to make digital work more harder. So I'm not going to talk about it. And here's what I'm going to talk about. So I decided that let me talk about the other side and the other aspect of digital marketing, which is also a branding when it comes to FMCG as, as a category. Uh, it's, it's fairly even important uh, to look at the branding side of the element when it really comes to FMCG marketing. And what are the kind of really three fundamental things that marketers near, really need to look at uh, when it comes to this sort of a digital planning thing. Mira has spoken a lot about the consumer journey. This is the Ma Madison's framework where we look at things from an encounter phase, which is largely from an awareness perspective, to an explore, to a buy, um, and then further on to share an experience, right? And there's a lot of slides that have already been spoken about, the explore stage and the buy stage, and and a fantastic tool called as Intutel. I'm sure you guys should go outside and see the demo of this tool. But what I'm going to focus upon is the encounter stage, which is largely the awareness stage. And that's where the challenge is, because most of the FMCG marketeers say that, yeah, I'm making, I'm getting all my reach. How is digital going to help me there, right? So let's look at some of the basic principles and basic fundamental things. Before that, what has changed in last five to six years when it came to digital marketing. 
people were talking about clicks and engagement, likes, shares. Who talks about it today? The, the, the matrix is completely changed. Today, people are actually looking at reach and frequency. Today, most of the marketers speak about data and technology. For the, with the evolution of digital, today there's so much of programmatic and the kind of audience data available for us, right? So I'm gonna make just three sharp points of how smartly FMCG marketers can really use digital to make their presence felt. And there are enough and more number of reasons in terms of measurements to prove that it's really working hard. Point number one, capitalizing on reach and frequency. Uh, digital may not be the primary reach medium for an FMCG as a bank, but it definitely supplements right, to your television monies. Even, but, and, and moreover, it actually works as a very, very effective frequency medium. Even if you park just about seven to 10% of your traditional media monies out, you will get an incremental reach coming out of it at a certain frequency and up. There are enough and more tools. We've got our own tool called as M-Spectra. We, we do a probabilistic modeling and we have the entire uh, Google base, YouTube base, as well as the bark data coming into us. You know, the, the another problem that most of the marketers don't really realize, when you plan on reach in frequency, quite often you plan it at 60%, at 4+, plus, and then you realize that what you've got is 75% at 2+. Plus. Because these ecosystems have built in such a way that it maximizes your reach, right, at 1. It comes back and by the time your budgets would have gone off. So frequency, again, becomes a byproduct. Now, at Madison, we've got this product, uh, this called tool called as F-Maximizer, which really applies on the ad-serving, which applies on the ad-serving technology and delivers the same thing. And why is it important? Because end of the day, okay, yes, reach is important, but you also wanna use digital medium to get the right frequency for your products. Point number two, simplicity of targeting. There are various, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys who, uh, you know, who speaks about a lot of targeting and all in digital medium, but when it comes to branding, do you really need all these sort of targeting? Some of the DMP says that there are 650 targeting, uh, you know, clusters and audiences and affinities. Really from an FMCG point of view, when you're in the encounter stage, do you really need to, you know, apply all these filters? And let's look at what, premium as a marketer you pay when you apply all these filters. There's roughly around 10 to 15% of premium. And if you keep the budgets constant, technically your audience pool size is dropping down. So when you're actually planning, do you really need to apply all these filters, right? I'm gonna just show you a stimulation of one of our advertiser, one of our CPG clients that we've been planning on. And you know, these are, these are some of the uh, this is one of my annual AOPs of our, one of the presentations that I made to a CPG client. Where what we did is we kept uh, the reach and frequency 47% at 7 plus constant. We kept the investments also constant. And look at the difference. The option three actually gives you much, much higher reach and much higher weeks on air. See, marketing is all about making the right choices, right? And what's the trade-off? Do you want interactions? Do you want weeks on air? End of the day, we all say, jo hai, wo hai. you all need a higher week on air, right? That leaves me to the point number three and very, very critical point. Are my ads being really seen? And uh, moreover, this is definitely one of the problems in the industry that we all are facing. Ad viewability definitely becomes, is, is uh, one of the biggest challenges. This is some of the data uh, that one of our partners to Moat is shared with us, where there's roughly around 42% of, uh, you know, problem in viewability. Maybe the, the ad unit is below the fold, but you're paying for it. Uh, so fundamentally, the pixel needs to be fired in just about a second after the ad is exposed. And that's how it counts when it comes to banner. And when it comes to video, it's roughly in view, it has to fire the pixel in about two seconds. Uh, if you just add certain layers of tools like Mort or IS, whatever that are available in the market, the, the genuine OTS can really give you a significant sales lift. In. So 
well, it comes at a cost. It comes at a probably a certain a small percentage, a point percentage of whatever media spend you do. But that actually helps you, really gives you a very high sales lift, and you're genuinely talking to the right humans and not the NHTs, the non-human traffics. With that, I'm going to uh, sum up. These were the three main critical points I thought are very important from a planning perspective. And that's it. Thank you. So over to the next session. Well, firstly, I'm going to thank all our speakers as well. And I'd like to invite uh, Nina Jaipuria, who's the head of the Kids Entertainment Cluster with Nickelodeon, to please come on the stage to also present a token of gratitude to all of our three speakers. Can we have a round of applause one more time, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much.